there you go. Now we're now we're live. You can actually see us. Okay, well, I think uh, we still got some people loading in here, but uh, I want to make sure that we uh, start and finish on time this morning. So we'll get uh, rolling with this morning's webinar. So good morning and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for the Pivoting Your Business uh, webinar. We put together lots of great resources for restaurants uh, in this challenging time right now. And I've uh, been observing a lot of things and making a lot of notes. And what we've done is we've put this all together into a presentation for you today. My special guest is Samantha Schofield from the BCRFA. Uh, if you're wondering uh, why we're here in the same room, uh, not only are we partners in uh, the industry that we work in and with the organizations that we work for, uh, we're also partners in real life too. So um, we have the wonderful opportunity of being here together in the room, same room uh, at this time to make this presentation happen for you today. Uh, again, today's webinar is all about giving you the tips, tricks, resources, insight, innovation uh, into um, helping your business uh, in this challenging time uh, and whatever uh, leverage you can have to create any revenue certainly is a help. We're going to be using the chat feature today, so please feel free to ask any questions that you have on your mind and we will take a moment and answer your question uh, from the chat box. And if we don't have an answer, we'll certainly take down your information. Happy to get back to you with an answer on uh, on what uh, the question that you might have. We are recording the session too, so we will make the uh, deck as well as today's recording available uh, so that you can have it. So let's, uh, without any further ado, let's just jump right in there. Uh, again, we'll make this uh, copy of the deck uh, available afterwards. I want to point out uh, our cisco.ca website. There certainly is lots of great information available for you on there. What I do also like what our organization has done is we partnered up with One Table and Save Hospitality as well as Canada Takeout Day uh, to really wrap our arms around uh, this industry, uh, not just here in British Columbia, but uh, certainly coast to coast. So there's, um, again, lots of great resources. Cisco Canada is really stepping up and doing a lot for our industry. So a really good uh, shout out to them. Our agenda for today, we're gonna talk about uh, these essential must do for restaurants right now. Uh, really a lot of uh, restaurants have already made that crucial pivot. Some are still sitting on the fence um, and there really is opportunity to come back and still um, you know, have your business open and create revenue. So the, these are the key areas that we're going to touch on today. We're going to talk about takeout, delivery, uh, your menu, social media, advertising, cleaning and sanitation, as well as some pop-up grocery. And we have Mother's Day uh, right around the corner. So we got a few things around that. We'll jump right in and uh, we'll tackle this takeout and curbside. Um, my three callouts here are streamline cost and packaging. Uh, you want to limit the number of menu offerings that you have. It's really going to help you manage your inventory and also manage your labor. Uh, you can still continue to sell some of those really signature items uh, that are true to your brand and help promote your brand. You really want to be sensitive to cost with a number of Canadians uh, on uh, EI right now or some of the other programs. Uh, cost is going to be a really big factor for them they're still going to, to dine out and I believe support this industry, but they're not gonna be doing it with as much frequency um, and, and certainly cost is gonna be a factor for them. And then waste is very important too. We wanna to make sure that everything that comes in the back of the restaurant goes out the front in a saleable form. So really maximizing uh, you know, any waste is, is very key. Uh, packaging, uh, sustainable packaging is more crucial than ever. Uh, and your packaging is also marketing your business. So you want to make sure that you have a, a really positive message uh, with your takeout packaging. And then napkins and cutlery and things like that uh, on request only because people are going to be taking that uh, product home and they probably have all those things already on hand. 
I think the thing on packaging too to remember is that packaging helps to guarantee that your product arrives how you want it to arrive. So make sure that you do that test to make sure that your product arrives how you want it to arrive. Set it in the in the container, leave it on the counter for half an hour, and make sure that that container that you've chosen is the right container for your product. Absolutely. Uh, the thing here is visibility is key. Uh, we've been doing a couple of drive arounds uh, in various different communities because uh, we live in the lower mainland. Um, but we know that a lot of restaurants are open for business for their takeout and curbside and or delivery, but visibly they look closed. So if you have a uh, an A-frame that says that you're open for business, you're open for takeout, you could be capturing some of that uh, walk by traffic in front of uh, your restaurant. When I think the thing to do is to make sure that you have, if you have that sandwich board available, particularly if it's a chalkboard, change it up. Talk about your, your features that you're doing that particular day and make sure that you have, if possible, your hours on there because the likelihood that your hours are the same as they were before this pandemic is, is it's not going to be happening. So make sure that your customers that are either driving by or walking by on their afternoon walk know when you're open and if you have something different happening, tell them so that they can connect with you. Just like they would read the church sign when they drive down the road every morning and hope that it changes with some cheeky message, you can use your uh, sandwich board to do that same thing to draw attention and get them to think of you first for takeaway. Absolutely. Uh, so you take out curbside, single serve and family style are roughly about that 60-40 split right now with millennials. Uh, females and Gen X wanting to order multiple meals and prefer those in individual containers. Uh, your profit margin is going to be all captured on takeout and curbside uh, as opposed to third party and or delivery type services. Um, with that one, the BCRFA who I work for are definitely working on uh, the third party industry to get those fees down. Uh, we are trying to put some pressure on them. Uh, California just mandated that fees have to go down for a third party down to 15%. So uh, we're hoping that with that huge market putting that pressure that we can do the same here. So it definitely I would go with the curbside um, model or the takeout pickup takeout. Um, but there is some future looking at putting pressure on those third party people to be a better partner to our industry. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the beer and wine offerings, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. So certainly can offer out beer and wine with all your takeout meals. And then where, where you can champion uh, yourself as a local business and other local businesses around you. A uh, really good opportunity to help uh, spread some of the love, especially when it comes to social media. And we'll talk about that uh, in a segment coming up. Uh, and then on this slide, there's also a quick snapshot of the types of foods that are being offered and, and what those percentages are. When adding beer, wine, and spirits, uh, you know, our call out here is we really want you to know the facts. Uh, visit the Government of British Columbia's website and you can learn all the information about the amendment that they've made to the sale of alcohol. Uh, what's really important here is that uh, you need to be selling alcohol with a meal. Uh, you can't sell it as a standalone. Uh, and then the conditions around the word packaged, uh, meaning that the container that the manufacturer originally sold the product in, you can't package any liquor uh, yourself. What we have seen is some innovative cocktail kits uh, becoming available where you're either purchasing the spirit alongside of it or you're taking it home and adding your own spirits. So you can still have that... Uh, you know, that signature experience, even though they're having it at home. And for you guys up in the Okanagan, I'm sure sure it goes without saying, the key here is to, if you can support with your pairing suggestions and when you're with your add-ons, use that Okanagan wine, local beer, local uh, coolers, cider. Everybody is super leveraged right now everyone's feeling the pressure so that if we are showing support for other local businesses with our add-ons people are starting to really connect with that local message they see the importance of supporting our partners in industry our partners in across the, the British Columbia sector so if, if you can do something that talks about supporting other local businesses specifically with this local uh, with the beer and wine initiative packaged alcohol 
definitely follow that local path here. It's a really good uh, connection for others to know that restaurant industry is supporting local food and beverage producers as well. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, effective April 20th, so as of Monday, uh, any third party delivery service uh, is required to have their serving it right certification to deliver that product. So if you are using those services, you want to make sure uh, that you're just covering off all your bases uh, and what you can to make sure you're protecting your license. Uh, we talked about reserve takeout time in one of our podcasts, uh, you know, five weeks ago, uh, this particular restaurant in the Okanagan. Um, I think it's really interesting what they were able to do is essentially um, very minimally flip their business model rather than just reserve seating. They've gone to a reserve takeout system. So they're able to still control um, the amount of product that they're bringing in, what they're producing and when they're selling it and they sell out on a consistent basis. Um, so really, really interesting what they're doing. Multi-course meals and uh, theme. Uh, so a number of restaurants, rather than just having the single onesie twosies, uh, a four-course meal is a great way to increase that average guest check, uh, and you know, helpfully you're able to stay true to what your brand and/or your business model is. And there's a couple of uh, examples here on the screen. Uh, and then this particular customer in Vancouver Island, who's doing a backyard family feast. So everything that you need for a full meal, including uh, some beers and very, very attractively priced uh, menu item. So hopefully they're getting some really good sales out of that. Uh, the one I think is really popular for people is the date night concept. So you have something where people are at home, they're tired of thinking they want something to make it a little more interesting. Date night's a great concept. Suggest that wine pairing, suggest that beer pairing work with somebody to do a local a bakery or a local ice cream shop to add that dessert so there's a good option there the other option is to make sure that if you're doing theme packs you do something that's a family pack so that you have the option of something that's a little higher tier for the parents to eat and something that's a lower tier for the kids to eat because uh, not all kids have advanced tastes, as a friend of ours likes <laughs> to say. Um, but you also know that a lot of parents are tired of cooking three meals a day. They're running out of steam for that. So that family pack is going to go a long way to help somebody who's looking for an option. Uh, I really, really like uh, this particular example right here. So personalizing the guest experience. We can't have patrons in our restaurants to really give them a good experience. So think about uh, just adding a personalized note. Uh, you know, a simple thank you can go a really long way um, utilizing your packaging. Uh, and even there's a great way to advertise what you have coming up the following week by slipping a little sheet inside or slipping your menu inside the bag so that they have that as a reference so that they can think about you. Um, you know, I think back in the day when you had that uh, that drawer in your kitchen and you pulled it open and here were all the places that did takeout and had their takeout menu. I think I'm dating myself a little bit. That might've been just before the, the days of the internet, but uh, certainly a great opportunity to advertise your business uh, that you're open. Uh, I have a slide here about uh, knowing your community. So, um, you know, go into MapQuest and, and have a look and think about that five kilometer radius uh, for urban, um, you know, probably 10 or 20 kilometers for more rural type areas. Um, but draw that circle and that's going to be your target demographic. Uh, are there any local businesses that you can partner up that are really close to you? Uh, are there any local bloggers or influencers that can help promote your business? Are there any chambers or, or BIAs that you can partner up with and leverage their social media contacts to help get some of that messaging out? We know that downtown Kelowna BIA is quite involved in local chamber in Kelowna is doing some promotions uh, as is tourism Kelowna so, so there's some people you can make if you're not already working with them check out and see what they're doing um, and then there's also the breaking bread now website where you can which is started in Vancouver but it is now covering most of Canada with independent restaurants who are offering takeout so I think it's a free service to get on their channel to promote it so there's another group that you can get out reach out to yeah so here's the example where the White Rock BIA, we, uh, we did a drive by White Rock Pier 
and uh, it is all fenced off and closed. They don't want people gathering down there. And I think it's really affecting some of those local businesses. So here's a great way where that uh, local BIA is promoting a particular restaurant. Uh, so there's a great opportunities there. Frontline safety, if you are bringing people into your business, you wanna consider all the procedures uh, that should be in place, uh, you know, sneeze guards, uh, floor decals for social distancing it looks a little bit nicer than, you know, a piece of masking tape with an X on it, uh, where to stand. Um, it certainly brings that little bit of a professionalism up. This particular company, uh, West Key Exhibita, uh, I believe that they have a location in Kelowna as well, uh, offers these products. Uh, so think about products like that uh, in your business. Um, and for that one, I just wanted to add that we the information that we have going forward we have the opportunity with dr bonnie henry to give some feedback on what's happening in our industry and how we can reopen but i don't think that there's going to be any uh, true ex exhaustion of the social distancing and physical distancing for a few months to come so if you're thinking about oh do i want to um, have the expense of buying those decals or getting that clear plexiglass uh, i we think that those steps are going to be long lasting and if they are the the only step we have to do that'll be a blessing for us so do think about doing those things now and getting organized because i think it's going to be part of the reopening protocols as well as the protocols that we have yep. uh talk a little bit about delivery uh, uh uber eats uh, cisco is a partner with i don't know i don't think that they're in the okanagan yet um, but really my call out here is uh, what we're seeing are a number of operators are taking the delivery back into house. Uh, this particular restaurant group in the Lower Mainland Top Table uh, has taken uh, their number of restaurants and have created their own delivery service where they're delivering to a certain radius uh, to not only deliver a great product, uh, but make sure that it, uh, you know, is intact and, and, you know, follows up with what their brand is. Uh, but really, and you know, Sam talked about it earlier, uh, the BCRFA is working on uh, lobbying for those third party delivery services to uh, have a more reasonable uh, type of commission structure in place. Uh, for people that are ordering and having it delivered, uh, they are still concerned about a few key areas. That's how the food was prepared, how it was packaged and how it was delivered. Uh, through no fault of any restaurant, uh, COVID-19 has uh, er eroded trust uh, is the best way that I could uh, coin it. Um, so people are still very concerned about that. Uh, you want to make sure that your packaging is tamper-proof, that you have those stickers on there. Uh, and then when it comes to delivery, even your takeout and pickup curbside, uh, order accuracy is so, so important. Um, you want to make sure that you're double checking, even triple checking every order so that it is uh, sent out and 100% accurate. Because I think that if, if it's wrong, um, people might not tell you or they're just not going to order again. And that uh, repeat business is so, so important. Well, think of the dinner that I had the other night where you waited in the car while I went and got some Mexican food and I had a lovely burrito, but I don't know what happened to the guacamole I paid an extra two fifty for. So, you know, these are the kind of things that am I going to wait in a line again to get something that wasn't what I ordered? And that's just me being a customer, not me being an industry member. So I think that we do. I mean, I have some tolerance because I get it. Everybody's overwhelmed, but definitely that order accuracy helps you want to go back. Yeah. And then uh, online order management or an e-commerce platform, especially if you're going to look at doing something pop-up grocery, there might be an order, an opportunity for you to have a contactless payment system by having it ordered online and having the customer come and pick it up. Um, it, you know, it can help with the ease of um, efficiency within your business. Cisco is a partner with Order Ease, so there is a way to save a few dollars on getting that uh, platform set up or you can go to a platform like Shopify. Modified menus, I believe that everybody's modifying their menu right now. This isn't necessarily so important for now, but it is gonna be important as we start to move out of this. And, you know, supply chain still um, is leveled off, but it's still not perfect right now. So 
you want to make sure that you are uh, still having a limited menu even as we come out of this. My call outs here are going to be around cost and profit. Um, you know, where you're trying to generate business by ordering or offering BOGOs. Um, you want to make sure that you're costing that all out correctly. Uh, even when you're going to a third party, um, it could really be eroding any margin that you have. You want to make sure that you're considering portion sizes uh, and have everything bang on to manage your cost as well. The comfort food piece, which you're going to go into. I think this one is super key. For people, people are looking for something easy, something larger portion, something that they know, something that they know will hold. So you can sell somebody something as a burger for right now, and then they might buy the stew or the casserole or the whole roasted chicken, the jambalaya, something like that as a secondary item. So they're doing the two meals in one or even three meals. This elevates your what you're offering to them. It also gives them that you that bigger check and gives them the one less stop, um, which if you're trying to re reduce your reduce your number of stops and increase your social distancing, getting that two meals, three meals in one, it's a big win for you and it's a big win for your consumer. So that's a super important one. Yep. And even uh, HMRs, there's a really good opportunity to, to future sell. You know, maybe it's a meal that you're just finishing the chicken at home and everything else is fully prepared. Or even think about maybe a signature sauce that you have or something that you make in house that is super tasty that you can add on uh, as an additional uh, to your menu. Fisco does have some great services available. There is the on demand program where you can go in and design your own modified menu. Super simple, easy program to use. You're just going to drop in text. Uh, add your logo and hit the PDF button and then you can just print it uh, in house or even as you're looking for future state, um, maybe you want to have a, a more uh, regular menu in place limited menu. Uh, we our design team can certainly help you out uh, with that particular project as well, uh, but certainly contact your Cisco marketing associate and they can help get you set up for either service. I'm going to talk about social media now, uh, Instagram, Facebook, the number one and two platforms for restaurants, uh, for their advertising. Uh, everybody's on it. Everybody's consuming digital media in a much bigger way. Uh, so there's a great opportunity. Most restaurants are on Instagram and Facebook, uh, but you certainly want to be using those platforms as well as your website. Uh, never, never forget that. Have a really good website. Uh, that is up to date uh, with all the information surrounding your your business, your takeout menus, uh, everything promoted online. The uh, Instagram and the, the algorithm. So uh, Instagram regularly updates their algorithm. However, when they do major overhauls is when they announce it. So in January of 2020, Instagram did an overhaul on their algorithm. Uh, if I'm going to sum this slide up in, in just one quick sentence, the use the feature, use the app and use all the features within the app uh, and all of your posts. And that will help to increase your reach and help gain new followers. Instagram still looks at these six key features around relationship, interest, frequency, following usage and timeliness. Uh, so whatever you can get for interaction, uh, through those social channels. I know that uh, the Cisco channels have been uh, reposting uh, customers' posts that are in, that have been tagged. Uh, we'd like to be doing more of that. Uh, it's frequent. So if you can, make sure you're tagging us uh, in all your posts and we will do our best to get that re-tagged out. And I think you guys are doing that too. Yeah. We have three count accounts that we work with for BCRFA. So we have the at BCRFA channel. Generally, we use that for uh, business to business, but if you tag us um, on any of your posts, we will repost any offers around takeout. We run at BC Taste Better, um, and that one is literally about telling anybody about BC restaurants offering BC local food and beverage. And as part of our Eat Drink Local program, we have Eat Drink by BC. That's a partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture, which is gonna play a big part this summer in making sure that we're promoting all restaurants doing great things for local food and beverage. Um, we'll get 
more information to you as we get ready to reopen because we're definitely going to want to have everybody who's interested and available and participating in that program. The Ministry of Agriculture has is going to be making the program for free this summer. So uh, tag us on any of those accounts at BCRFA, BC Taste Better, and Eat Drink by BC, and we'll make sure that we're reposting and engaging with you. We have people on the channels pretty much all day long, so we can help you with those relationships and the frequency of your engagement. Yep. Um, you want to make sure that you're building very high quality posts as well. So you want to make sure that you have a great looking image. You always want to geotag where your location is. Uh, you're certainly going to tag any relevant accounts, uh, like we just said. Um, but think about tagging your local partner accounts. If you're adding a bottle of wine on to a particular menu special, make sure that they're tagged so that you can use their social media reach as well, because they're all looking for business and they will all be reposting uh, some of those messages. You want to make sure that you also have a really good engaging caption that has a call to action. Order today. Visit our website for our takeout menu. Call us for your next meal, those types of things. Uh, you want to make sure that your post looks really clean. So use those emojis and bullets for separation. Uh, if somebody took that photo for you, you want to make sure that you can uh, credit them because there's another channel that you can use for reposting. Uh, and then you want to put your hashtags, always put your hashtags in a comment after your post because it does count as engagement um, that helps to also feed that Instagram uh, algorithm. And if, uh, if you're wondering about what hashtags you should be using, uh, so shoot me a message and I'd be happy to share uh, a couple exercises around creating hashtags uh, for your business. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about advertising. Uh, I am seeing, again, because I'm monitoring three social channels as well as my own, uh, I'm seeing more and more restaurants um, using this platform for advertising. And there's some really interesting notions here because it's very powerful and you can get started for as little as $10 a day. You really set your own budget. Uh, there are four distinct categories for advertising on Instagram, Facebook. It's through their stories, photos, uh, videos, and if you're going to be doing some of that pop-up grocery or e-commerce, uh, carousel ads are a great way to advertise. Not only that, uh, Instagram and Facebook have a ton of data on all of their users, and this is where you can uh, take your advertising really to the next level by targeting into demographics. So geography, age range, even gender, uh, you can add all those targets into your advertising. What I do wanna note here is that uh, the more demographics you wanna dial into, the cost of your advertising certainly goes up. Uh, but for some sponsored content that will help increase your reach, uh, for $10 a day, you set the number of days that you want uh, that to go out and that can help you um, just that little bit more. Uh, cleaning and sanitation, I'm sure that every restaurant has a great cleaning and sanitation program. Again, COVID-19 has uh, certainly uh, eroded some trust right now, or there's an opportunity to showcase uh, what you're doing. And then especially as we move uh, into the next phase of potentially reopening, uh, creating awareness around what you're doing and your routines within your restaurant are going to be uh, paramount. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have a really good routine in place. Um, you know, double, triple your schedule. Uh, all that piece is going to have to be really visible. Uh, and then again, around the awareness piece, I think it's okay to put a social media post out that shows what you're doing to create a very clean and safe environment for your patrons, especially as uh, we reopen. I think that's another one that we're really trying to work on um, as we think forward into when we'll be able to reopen. Um, probably in a stage reopening is what those protocols are that we can all do in all of our restaurants um, that actually show that consistency, that deliverability, um, so that when somebody goes into a restaurant as a customer, they have the confidence that we promise to do a certain set of things and they can see those things being done. So we're working on getting some of those repeatable processes 
uh, ready and available to everybody so that you know we, we've got that consistency because we think that the public are ready to eat out but they want to know what we're doing and consistency is really going to help with that yeah and uh, here's an interesting uh, thing that i saw again on social media uh, the vancouver club offering meal kits for their members uh, with contactless pickup but in this photo we can see the gentleman is uh, got some surface spray and he's making sure that all of the containers and things that are going into that bag uh, have all been sanitized. Uh, some key takeaways here around physical and social distancing for the front of the house and the back of the house. For the front, we wanna make sure that we're you know, doing the things that we're probably already doing, monitoring traffic, making sure that we don't have too many people uh, in any given area, uh, making hand sanitizer available, um, using gloves when collecting payment, cleaning the terminals, uh, those sneeze guards that we highlighted a little bit earlier. And for the back of the house, um, you know, consider staggering start times, um, you know, segregated areas for the kitchen so that people aren't uh, too, too close. Because let's face it, we all have very small um, kitchens and storage rooms. So making sure that your staff is adequately protected is, is equally as important. Uh, staggering break times, making sure the break area is clean. Uh, and then also think about your deliveries too, your inbound deliveries. You're not scheduling too many to come all at the same time and that they have enough room uh, to move around uh, within their areas. Another category that we're seeing uh, really uh, take off is the pop-up grocery. Uh, and there's lots of great, uh, you know, sort of mix and match options. I put together a few examples here on the board you know, the butcher's box, the pantry box, the baker's box. Um, people want um, to have those less trips out. So even think about combining this with a meal that you're already serving. Um, you know, I saw one uh, not too long ago where it was, uh, you know, some fresh baked goods and some goodies to take home uh, for additional days. Uh, what you want to do here, and I think it's important, you know, you want to go to that local grocery store, uh, within that couple of kilometers of radius and look at what they don't have and what they don't have is what you want to be able to promote uh, in your business. And I think it's also another opportunity to partner with another couple of local businesses. Uh, I've never seen people go through as much coffee as at home as they are going through coffee at home now. So if you have a local uh, roaster that is a beast based there in Kelowna or based in Penticton and you can bring in pounds of their coffee and you're doing a breakfast special and then you offer that additional buy a pound of beans with us, that's a great opportunity. If you have somebody who's doing local honey um, and you can bring in that local honey. So some of those grocery items or those support items to your menu can be other partners that are equally suffering and you want to you want to work with those people because those long-term relationships you can start those now and work with people for for years to come on those connections and as we support each other uh it, that message really spreads and people are excited about that yep so some great examples full circle has a great little uh, menu list of uh, fresh produce available uh, Pender Tacos was doing the same thing. So on the Gulf Islands, what I really like about what they did here is they have a really good safety message in their post. And that is that we receive our shipments from a food safe company at Cisco Victoria and processed in our food safe facility. So, you know, what they're doing is they're telling their people that we're not getting in our car and driving around and putting this all together bringing it back into our business, repackaging it and trying to sell it to you that uh, you really have a, a good program in place. And again, it all lends back to that, uh, that trust factor. We talked about it earlier, potentials for um, signature sauces, uh, items that you have in your restaurant are really good add-ons, you know, the, a ketchup, a particular sauce, uh, and even some great uh, produce packs here that uh, have some additional goodies, sugar, rices, lentils, uh, those types of things. Uh, lastly, for my section, just quickly talk about Mother's Day. Uh, if you're not already on it, you need to get all over it and you need to start advertising it now because the people who are going to come out of the gate initially are going to be the ones that win. Uh, I put together a few suggestions down here. 
Uh, so think about uh, brunch kits or brunch theme pack, um, either as a fully ready to go or an HMR. Um, think about a social distancing picnic. Everybody wants to be outside. So everything you need for a picnic in the park in one box. Uh, Pre-order mom breakfast and have it delivered or go pick it up yourself and drop it off at the door. Uh, certainly don't forget um, those add-ons. So mimosas or a signature uh, drink to add on. Totally signature cocktail this one up. Yeah. It's a good option. Uh, and then another great way, I know a lot of restaurants will hand out uh, uh, fresh cut flowers for mom uh, when you come in and dine. So, you know, there's that opportunity there as well. Partner with a local florist, offer it as a pre-order so that you're able to manage your inventory on it. But what a great way to have somebody come and just do one stop uh, and pick up the bundle and everything right there at your restaurant. Uh, so I thought that was a really good uh, idea as well. Uh, so again, that's the rounded out for my section. I'm going to pretty much just turn it over to Sam here because she really has all the detail on some of the government programs. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat. But uh, Sam, I'm going to turn it over to you. So uh, some of you may know me from coming up there and working with you on the Eat Drink Local program. Um, we are, the BC Restaurant and Food Services Association um, does represent restaurants across the province. And our goal is to help restaurants do business better. Uh, right now, our goal is to be your industry advocate, to hear your stories, to know what's going on in industry and make sure that we're telling those stories and representing your issues really clearly uh, to government, both provincial and federal. And when it matters, we're also talking to the local jurisdictions. So our goal is to be there for you and to make sure that we're helping you understand uh, exactly what's going on. My boss is Ian Tostenson. Uh, you probably have seen him on the news lately. Uh, we are right now working uh, with restaurateurs across the province to try and put together some protocols um, and uh, after a call out from Dr. Bonnie Henry, because she's said that she wants to hear from our industry on what kind of innovation that we're able to bring to the table to help us uh, reopen and be successful given the parameters that she has. So we're really excited to have that opportunity. If you um, do want to email Ian or email me, my emails at the end with some ideas that you have of what things that you think we can do, um, definitely do that. Um, we've been working primarily under the banner of one, one table and hospitality.ca. Um, talk about the three pillars of what people are needing in terms of help. Obviously, there's the immediate financial assistance piece, and that we think has largely been solved by the wage subsidy and the uh, emergency response benefit. Then there's the second section, which is the goal of immediate protection and stopping evictions and financial actions. And there is definitely a lot of information on that, that that's coming down the line. We're seeing some of that action. We haven't got the details from the government, but it is coming. And then now what we want to work on is that piece of how do we reopen? How do we build back that customer confidence? How do we create that repeatable experience that shows health and safety? And what tools do you guys need to make that be successful? So those are the three pillars that we're working under. Um, and the, the thing that we want to remind people is that we're, we are only about week five, week six into this nightmare. Um, so it, we started start getting those limits on gathering sizes that week of March 9th. By the week of March 16th, it cascaded across the country. Uh, Montreal closed, then Ontario closed, and then Bonnie Henry closed us at the end of that week, um, about March 20th. So we started to think about, okay, are we closing our doors? Are we pivoting to takeaway? That was the week of March 23rd. Our stimulus packages were announced on that, that the next week, March 30th, and the, the package opened the door for the um, applications for the Canada Emergency Response Benefit on M April 6th. And if you had staff that you laid off and they filled in those applications, it took about five minutes, but they were getting them two days later. So although it feels like this is that March was the month that had 18 weeks in it, um, we really are into the six week period of this. 
Um, and a lot of government things take a year, a year and a half to get organized. So for us, and we do do a lot of applications to government, we're really seeing um, that this is quite fast for them. Um, so the first thing that we want to talk about is the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. Uh, this one um, is a good program um, because it was so fast to turn around. So this is the one that most people will, anybody who's been laid off um, will be get eligible for the $2,000 a month. It doesn't matter if you were earning 1,000 or 5,000, um, everybody is getting the same amount. This is um, because the easier that it is to apply for, the easier it is for the government to execute. And so they have they have reduced those barriers. If you apply for EI, it takes about an hour um, because of the process that is involved, whereas this is quite uh, simplified. The checks uh, were coming, the electronic deposits a couple days, um, and then the check is about 10 days. Um, there is no tax deducted at source for this program, but depending on the person's income at the end of the year, they will be taxed on their full year end income. So, and I see that there's a question about uh, bringing people back to work. And I think that one of the things that was changed last Friday was that if people come back to work and are out and work and are earning up to a thousand dollars a month, they can still, they can work that up to a thousand dollars and be eligible for CERB. So um, it does allow you to bring back a part, a, a truly a small part-time person um, and to do, and to bring, give them that thousand dollars of income. The way that I understand it right now is that you can only have somebody either be on CERB or CEWS. So the serve is the $2,000 a month and the wage subsidy is the 75%. Um, so we are suggesting if you're thinking about bringing people back to work, that you bring back that person that is somebody who is very adaptable. They know your business really well. They're somebody who's willing to take on as many hats as it takes uh, to do the get the jobs done and that you bring back the full time people and apply for that 75% um, instead of having somebody bring somebody back that's a 10 hour a week person who is only going to get that $1,000 and then the top up, you're better to bring back that person that's a full time person who's willing to wear many hats, who can really help you get your business ready to reopen, start thinking about the different levels of what's involved and apply for this, the wage subsidy. Um, but uh, for the CERB right now, anybody who's lost their job is eligible for this as long as they've declared a minimum of $5,000 of income in the last 12 months. So if somebody really was only doing one shift with just you and nobody else, they probably aren't eligible for this. Anybody who has lost their job uh, for a reason other than COVID or who quit, um, those people are not actually eligible for uh, CERB because this is definitely a response package to help people get through the program. Um, so if you offer somebody a job that is um, to come back to a job, and you have to be conscious that you want to offer them a job that is over that $2,000 threshold, that's why we're saying the full-time people first or under that $1,000 threshold. If you offer them a job, when somebody's applied for the CERB, they have to guarantee that they don't have income. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. Um, uh, in order to get the next month's allocation of money. So you, the if they decline jobs, um, I don't think that they are that means that they are, would be eligible. So, but definitely don't offer somebody a, to bring back that person that would make, a th you know, $1,200 with you and think that they're not going to be totally frustrated with your management style. You've got to really think about that everybody is totally stressed out about money, keeping people in the loop, trying to help them through this process and help yourself at the same time is super important. Um, so Sorry. I see a question about seasonal workers. Um, this is a complicated one. Are, and it, it depends on when they were supposed to restart their work. If they were laid off and they were supposed to come back to work for you, say April 1st, 
If they're supposed to come back to you April 1st and you had a letter on the table that said that they were eligible for work April 1st, they should be able to apply for CERB. So because they have realized that some people's season starts have been delayed. Um, so they should be eligible as long as they have a letter on file, they should be able to um, apply for that CERB. The question I have in my mind is whether if you can bring them back, say May 1st, um, whether they will be eligible for the wage subsidy, because in theory, the wage subsidy is for people who have been working this whole time. So I don't know the answer to that one yet. And we are waiting for that information because the application for the wage subsidy doesn't actually come online until next Monday. Um, if you have employees that are actually employees, you issued them a record of employment when you laid them off, they still only get the CERB. They may be eligible for more under EI, but because they were laid off um, because of COVID-19, they qualify for CERB first. For CERB is 16 weeks. At the end of 16 weeks, you are um, under some new um, new regulations that have been put in through um, employment standards, you are required to ask, to bring them back to their job after the COVID-19 period has stopped. If they then get laid off uh, permanently after this, they will, um, if they have a proper record of employment, will be able to go back into the EI system. If they don't have a proper record of um, uh, employment, then they won't be able to go through that portal, uh, the proper EI portal, and they'll have to move on to um, a different, uh, a diff they may, they may have to just look for another job because they will stop being eligible for help. So that was a really good question, Sally. Um, make sure that uh, I type my email address into uh, the chat there. So just if you get a minute, just shoot us a message and I'll make sure I relay it back to Sam so that uh, if there are any other additional details or insights into your question that we can get that answered back. Um, and really quickly, there was another question about um, uh, people coming back to work uh, and, you know, wanting to stay on their couches. I don't think that this is going to be, uh, it, it's certainly not going to be an endless uh, tap of money coming in from the government. And people are, you know, we're already starting to look at what the restart plan looks like. Uh, so that uh, probably won't be uh, happening too, too much. But we do have a number of slides that you still have to get through. And I just want to make sure that we are flying through on time. So, um, so that somebody has asked for the uh, hashtag. So the uh, in terms of our accounts, it's BCRFA by BC um, is a good hashtag to use. BC Tastes Better is a good um, account to tag in. And then Eat Drink by BC as well. Um, and then Cisco Kelowna has some accounts, so we'll make sure you get those. If your people haven't applied for CRB already, you definitely want to send them to Canada.ca and coronavirus-serb. All the information is there. You do have to reapply every month um, to get this, uh, get this help. Um, so the key programs here probably you care more about are the ones for government operator for that are for you guys directly as employers. So uh, as of Monday, they did open a calculator to see what you'll be available for this wage subsidy. It's a 75% up to um, somebody who was earning about $4,400 a month. That would be the $847 a, month, a week maximum. So anything over that 4,400, they will still only get that uh, maximum of 847. Um, and anybody under again, it's 75%. The idea is that it will open for applications on Monday, so we want you to be ready. So if you are applying for this, and we definitely recommend that you do help back to, uh, for any of your employees that are paid on your payroll to uh, March 15th, you got to get into your um, My Business account on Canada Revenue Agency, and you need to look at all of your employees that you still have. Um, and the periods, there's three periods that you will be eligible for this. So it's March 15th to April 11th. April 12th to um, May 9th, and then May 10th to June 6th. So we want you to get with your accountant, get with your payroll company to get the information of who you've got working, how much they made before this. Make sure you have all your payroll records. 
uh, in order to el be eligible for the March, uh, April payout, you need to have lost 15% of business. So you need to be able to show how much a gross revenue you had in March, 2019 and compare it to gross revenue from March, 2020, um, for the next two periods, it's a 30% drop and that's for April and May periods. So make sure that you're getting with your accountant now to get that information. If you have only been in business uh, for say the last six months, you want to make sure that you have that gross revenue um, for January and February uh, of this year and be ready to provide that. So get with those people now, get organized. You have an extra day tomorrow to try and get that information so that you can apply Monday, hopefully Tuesday, because the sooner you apply, the sooner you get your money. Um, as an example that the government gave, we wanted to let you know that they do show it as being something that you can get for both part-time and full-time people. And the key thing about this example is that it says that if your people were full-time people and they come back and they're staying with you and you don't quite have full-time hours, they're still eligible for the top up to their full-time wages. So we want you to think about the fact that if you bring back that full-time person and they were working at a 37 hour week and now they maybe are working 32 hours according to the government regulation that's going to be okay what you want to do though is to take those extra five hours if they're not able to do cash that time or they're not gonna be able to do cleaning get them to think about uh, get them to be working with you on some of those key restarting elements working on job descriptions working on protocols for cleaning working on getting um, so your menu dialed in, working on your menu costing. If you've got people that can wear those multiple hats and you can use them to really help you dial in your food cost, uh, dial in the food cost, then make the dish so that it looks beautiful. Take that social media post, get some post information ready. Once you're ready to reopen, you have all that ready for yourself. So use this money that the government is offering in the wage subsidy to really help you take your business to the next level when you get a chance to go to the next level. Um, so a uh, question about the 10% and the 75%. So the 10% is uh, something that they were using as a credit against your uh, tax payments. Uh, the 75%, I would suggest you reply, apply for it instead of the 10% because it is a much bigger um, uh, amount of money that will allow you some cash flow. Uh, the one thing that's, that you may not know about the 75% is that the 75% will be considered revenue for your business. So at the end of the year, you will have to pay taxes on any uh, revenue re you receive from the government. If you've lost 80% of your business, the likelihood of the government forcing you to pay that remaining 25% is low. Um, if you have lost 15 or 30% or of your business, they really are going to expect you to try to pay that remaining 75, 25% so that you keep your employees at 100% payment. But be aware that um, you may want to have that conversation with your staff that if they come back to work that you can give them 75% or if they're staying with you that they will get a little bit less because you can only really bring them up to, uh, you know, 80% of what they were getting. But I think for a lot of people, 80% is, is more than that 20% uh, than the 2000. So they're going to really appreciate that you're talking to them, that you're, you're engaging with them, that you're giving them the truth of what's actually going on. Um, in terms of the CWS, you can um, get the uh, you can get the subsidy for as many people as you need it for. Um, all the information uh, for the CWS is on um, the government link that was there. Uh, the Canada Emergency Business Account. This is a really good option for everybody as well. It's the forty thousand dollar loan that you can use for any of your expenses in order to. Uh, get going with business again. You can use it for, to pay suppliers. You can use it to pay rent. You can use it for um, paying staff as, a, as an interim gesture. Uh, you, can, you just can't use it to pay down debt that you had before, and you can't use it to prepay anything uh, or to pay dividends to yourself. So in this case, $40,000 you don't have to have a minimum payment. You don't have to have any uh, premium payments. You just have to pay it all back by December 31st, 2022. If you do pay it all back by the end of December, 2022, 
uh, you actually, your the whole amount you have to pay is 30,000 of the 40,000. So 10% uh, comes back to you as a basically a grant towards your business. If you don't pay it off by the end of December, 2022, you will have to pay that full $40,000. It's eligible for any business that has earned, um, has paid out in payroll a, minim a minimum of 20,000 and a maximum of 1.5 million in payroll in the last year. So it's a pretty broad program. It's a great bridge between where we were having no funding and where you need to be to get that wage subsidy and hopefully their commercial rent assistance. So uh, last week they announced the commercial rents assistance um, and it will cover periods for April, May, and June. This is something that's going to go to your landlord if your landlord will defray that money to you. So uh, it hasn't been announced the actual details, but we expect that maybe tomorrow uh, we'll be getting some more information about this. So keep your ears open um, for announcements from Prime Minister Trudeau about what the commercial rent assistance looks like. We've heard that it's going to be about $5,000 cash in um, infusion for the three months. The, B the BC RFA website is also a really good resource for you as well. They are updating the website daily uh, to make sure that all the up-to-date information is on there. Uh, also, um, for the membership, there is a letter, newsletter or a daily letter that goes out uh, with any particular updates as well. We still have a, a little bit of information. We're going to continue on with the slides. I understand if people have to jump off because we're at the hour. Um, there's been really good interaction here, so uh, that's why we're probably just a little bit over on our time. But I will continue on with the webinar. Um, we will also make a digital copy available. Uh, afterwards, it'll take a little while, but I'll send it out to all of our Cisco Kelowna team for them to forward the links on to anybody who wants them. So I will power through this uh, last section <laughs> here for you. Um, so really here we're talking about what programs are available in terms of deferrals, uh, payment delays, and also some ideas of things that you can be looking for in terms of negotiations with your partners uh, in business. So right now, uh, provincial sales tax, healthcare tax, municipal taxes, carbon taxes, fuel taxes, all delayed. Anything that's a provincial tax delayed till September 30th. Um, your Q1 payments for WorkSafe BC are deferred till the end of June. And GST is also def uh, for quarter one is deferred till June 30th. So few um, easy tax savings that your accountants can be working on, not savings delays um, to help you with some cash flow. Hot BC Hydro has quite a good program. If you are forced to close because of um, COVID-19, which we've all been forced to close in terms of in restaurant dining, they're forgiving three months of small business power bills. Definitely worth looking into. Uh, the other side is that any of your employees who have lost work because of COVID-19 can apply for three months back on their personal hydro. So definitely thinking about telling this to your staff, letting them know it's available to them um, and look, and look into it for yourself. The small business applications are now available and they're available till the end of June. So definitely think about how you can connect with this. Um, in terms of individual programs, there's an emergency benefit for low income individuals of $1,000 from the BC government. There's an in increase in the uh, climate tax credit. Fortis has also uh, been working on some deferrals. So something that you can look at into and seeing what Fortis is offering um, for your gas bill. Um, if, you, if you are eligible for a GST credit as an individual, those have gone up and they will come on your next uh, GST credit bill. Um, for the Canada Child Benefit, if you have kids at home or if you have workers that have kids at home, Canada Child Benefit has gone up. Um, if you or any of your staff have student loans, those are on hold. So all student loans are held for six months and you don't have to pay any in interest. Basically, you stop now where you are and in six months you start up again exactly where you are with no additional debt incurred. Um, personal income taxes normally do at the uh, middle of next week. Now they're not due until June 1st, so you have some time to figure this out. And normally you would also have to pay interest on anything you pay that you, that you owe if you pay it after uh, April 30th. Again, now this is delayed until August 31st. So on a personal level, this is something that can really help you um, manage your personal finances and sort of get a picture of where you're at. Um, 
Yeah, Nick also commented here that the Columbia Basin Trust in the Kootenays also has some really accessible low interest flexible loans. Uh, some of the smaller banks have certainly stepped up. Uh, you had a interesting- I'm in love with Van City. I'm like in love with Van City. I don't bank with Van City. I bank with TD and I think they're creeps. Um, but I deal with I, everything I'm seeing from the uh, people like uh, Van City and and it sounds like the Com Columbia Basin Trust, they're really looking after their people. Van City has uh, deferred all interest on, um, on credit cards for people that have lost uh, their work. So there's definitely people that are doing good things like that. You can look into whether if you have a lease on your car, those are sometimes, yes, I see that uh, Tamara uh, Room, who is the leader of um, Van City, and I don't actually know how to say her name either, is is totally rocking it. Um, they they are they have deferred more mortgages than any other um, bank. A lot of people are having a hard time accessing mortgage deferral because there's so many rules the same as the business development bank funding there is the business development bank funding but they have um a lot of difficulty a lot of um hoops to jump through because they're not government backed um so you you things like um the business account that you can get that 40,000 that's government back so that the rate that they're being accepted like in the first week they accepted 195,000 loans um whereas those uh BDC bank loans are much more difficult to get as are the deferrals of your mortgage um but we see that Prospera Credit Union has been rocking it so definitely look at your banking partner um and make sure that of what they're offering the 0% interest is great. Uh, deferral of mortgages is great. Deferral of interest on any loans. Uh, make sure you're looking at your car loan. Make sure uh, if you have equipment leases, talk to the people that are providing you those equipment leases. Look and see what they're doing. If you're not able to use that equipment, some people are holding it and then restarting it. What you wanna make sure you're avoiding is the one that tells you that, that sure, they'll hold it, but they're gonna add the interest for the whole period of the hold. So, so get into that and make sure you're um, aware of it. The government of Canada uh, is at adding some more GST credit. Okay, we've done that whole slide. Um, if you have employees that are having a hard time paying their rent, they can apply through the government of BC for a rent supplement. This one is going to be similar um, to the um, uh, rent for commercial rent it goes to your landlord as long as the landlord applies it to your particular account. So you've got to make sure that you're working with your landlord to get the money into their hands and crediting to your account. Right now, if anybody is worried, there is an eviction ban for residential. So no one is actually allowed uh, to, to evict somebody during this time specifically because of COVID. So there's a lot of stability that the government of BC is really working hard to do. Um, I see a question here. Oh, per location. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know how that works, um, but we should definitely uh, look into it. Um, and we can, I can look at that one separately and get back to you. Um, the BCRFA uh, website does have a lot of information and we are um, working right now on a couple more presentations and hopefully we'll be able to work with Cisco on them on uh, what you need to do in terms of HR to restart. Um, and some of those processes and protocols, and then also sort of the cleanliness and next steps. So um, definitely lots to do still. We're working really hard to make sure that we can get through this, be engaged, and make sure that our customers are still loyal to us uh, through this process. I think the key here, we did a year and a half long labor study, and it's all about communication in terms of working with that labor shortage, and that message carries over to today. If you're talking to your people, if you're honest to your people, uh, if you're working with both your, your staff and your customers to tell them what's going on with your business, telling your story through social media, you're gonna weather this as well as can be expected. Yeah, there's another great question here. Does the 75% wage credit apply to owner operators who are on a salary? Yes, the answer to that one is yes. If you pay yourself as a dividend, then no, you don't get to apply. But if you are an owner operator and you are paid a salary by your company, you absolutely get to apply for yourself. Great question.
And I guess the last slide is um, you probably, a lot of you probably know Christina Ferreira up in the Okanagan. Christina runs our membership for BCRFA up there. So she's a resource. You can email her uh, through membership email, or if you have a regular email, you can email her there. Um, I run all of our programs, labor shortage, HR programs uh, by BCE Drink Local. More information on that to come as well. Um, you can email me directly. Um, and then we also have a human resources expert. So if you have any uh, particularly difficult HR questions about staff not coming back, how do you work with people, you can email our, our contact Jillian, her email is here, and Jillian can directly help you on some of those HR questions. Uh, that's usually a member benefit, but right now, if you're a, a restaurant operator and you're struggling, call Jillian. Excellent. Uh I think that takes us to the end of our presentation today. We're only about seven minutes over. What we can do is we can just hang out here for a few minutes and just monitor the chat uh, and see if any other questions uh, come off. Uh, but first I would like to say thank you to Samantha for uh, providing uh, our customers and the people on the call today with all this great information. Um, I've received a couple of comments here that uh, the the information has been really really good uh, so hopefully everybody's been able to take some notes maybe there's a few key takeaways like i said some of the things um, people are certainly already doing uh, if you're able to take away one or two things and apply that to what you're already doing even better we are here to help uh, both as cisco as an organization uh, but also uh, as our partner with the bcrfa to um, help help that's what we're all here for don't hesitate to reach out um, to me or to Ian directly. Um, Michael's email's on here as well. We're, we've got a lot of information. We're trying to capture it in an hour, but do, do loop back with us if you have any further questions. Awesome. Well, I see that uh, some people are dropping off. We'll just hang out here for another minute or two. I'm just watching that chat window.